Which brings us to the next instance of the attempt to create a utopian society on Earth. This is one we're a little bit more familiar with. Some of us are old enough to have lived through the struggle between the West and the Soviet Union. Uh, others of you, if you're not old enough, God, God bless you, good for you. Because <laughs> it was awful, it was ugly. But the same exact pattern applies. All right? Let me just go back. The same exact pattern applies in the Russian Revolution. First of all, Marxism was atheistic. Actually, between the French Revolution and the rise of Marxism, there were a number of developments. The French Revolution ended in 1794. Marx arose to prominence in the latter half of the 19th century. So by that time, deism had fallen out of favor. It was more of an 18th century idea. And frankly, atheism had replaced it. The idea of creating a society based on rationalism also had fallen out of favor. It had failed <laughs> miserably, right? Marx came up with, he was inspired by the French Revolution, but he came up with his own vision based on a different ideology. After the failure of the French Revolution, the, the critics of religion, they became full-blown atheists, right? And Marx, of course, famously considered religion as the opiate of the people, right? He openly expressed hostility towards God and religion, um, but beyond his own personal antagonism, he viewed it, and I think viewed it quite rightly, as an anti-revolutionary force, right? If you believe in morality and traditional concepts of right and wrong, you won't participate in the kind of violence that he advocates, right? He sought to replace religion with a new kind of secular system based on now materialism. Materialism replaced rationalism as the basis for the revolution. Yeah. So where did this come from? After the Napoleonic Age, which had replaced what was the debacle of the French Revolution, there was a young German philosopher named Hegel who attempted to create a new philosophical system that he entitled idealism, and it was a combination of rationalism and empiricism. He tried, in other words, tried to find a unified system of philosophy. And in that system, in his social theory, he saw history as the working out of spirit through human history to come to its ultimate conclusion. Right? So there was a goal of history, and that was spirit coming to know itself. So there's resonances here of the Christian faith of the Holy Spirit, but it's also a philosophical term as well, and because he tries to create a unified system. right? So this was the world in which Marx grew up in. And Marx, of course, was profoundly influenced by Hegel and adopted his theory of history. But he argued that Hegel had it backwards. He had it upside down. It was materialism, not idealism, that drove history. And he famously said that he found Hegel on his head and turned him right side up. Actually, the quote that everybody quotes is the exact opposite, but it's wrong. Everybody says that he turned Hegel on his head, but actually he said he found him on his head and turned him right side up. So he replaced the Hegelian mythology with one of his own. And you may be familiar with this term of historical materialism. What historical materialism basically means is that people, history began with people in poverty, but they were also equal. They were all equally poor. And he called this state primitive communism, uh, and which by even by its name, it suggests that the ultimate conclusion of history should be a mature communism, right? This founding myth replaces the rationalist founding myth, which had replaced the Judeo-Christian one, right? Basically, there were scarce resources, but everyone was equal. So according to historical materialism, the solution to the problem was division of labor and it allowed for the creation of wealth, which was a good, right? And as we recall, Rousseau had believed that private property was the original sin. Actually, Marx doesn't entirely disagree, but he just views it as a necessary evil in order for wealth to be generated. So the outcome produced wealth, but it also produced unequal development and inequality, which is what he takes on to resolve in his theory. The problem is, of course, it creates classes. There's a ruling class who are oppressors, and they exploit the labor of the working class who are oppressed. So the inequality of the classes is the new original sin in Marxism, which could only be overcome through violent revolution by the working class. 
So the goal of history was achieving ever greater material well-being. Like Hegel, this process necessarily took place through conflict. And Marx called this dialectical materialism. The dialectic and the dialectical struggle was part of Hegelian philosophy. But Marx, of course, combines this with his own materialist philosophy, right? So instead of spirit working its way through human beings to know itself, the material revolution the, was material coming to realize the just society. He has his new mythology. Naturally, he also then redefines what it means to be a human being. All history is nothing but a continuous transformation of human nature, according to Marx. Essentially, men begin to distinguish, he says, begin to distinguish themselves from animals as soon as they begin to produce their own means of subsistence, a step which is conditioned by their physical organization. That's a quote from his book, uh, German Ideology. Human nature, like in Rousseau, isn't fixed. It's not based on any immutable characteristics that you have but it's based on society, right? You are a product of the society you grow up in, and most specifically in Marx, you're a product of the means and, for, and relations of production. So essentially, human beings are created by their environment. And relationships are products of, that, of the mode of production in which you live in. Also, his views were influenced by Darwin as well. It's important for him and for the, all these revolutionaries to believe that human nature changes in this social and historical context because if it doesn't then their philosophy that you change society and human beings can be perfected is impossible right so we're just some lump of clay right and we're being shaped by the forces around us since human nature is determined by the economic system good and evil cannot be applied based on moral principles in fact for Marx, moral principles are nothing but the values of the ruling class that are imposed by those that are ruled, that they rule, excuse me. They are designed to maintain the status quo of the ruling class. Good and evil depend on whether actions promoted by the re revolutionary aims of... Marx instead argued that good and evil depended on whether actions promoted the revolutionary aims of, the so, of social change. Good and evil is, again, uh, which side are you on, right? So if you're on the side of the working class and a revolution, that makes you good in his system. And since we're products of our environment, good people are created by good societies. So we can't be judged based on our actions until we come from a good society, then we'll be good, right? So what is the utopian ideal of Marxism? You've, you guys have heard this before, from each according to his abilities to each according to his needs. But how does this utopian ideal be realized? As we saw uh, in Marx, it is through conflict, right? So Marx's theory, here's what Marx predicted. The working class would achieve class consciousness. And what does that mean? It means they'd become aware of their role in history their, and their role in creating this European future. They would rise up and overthrow the capitalist class. And that would usher in a class of society that would achieve the goal of historical materialism, eliminating the history of inequality and oppression. That's the theory. That's what he believes will happen. But it never happened. <laughs> Somehow, these workers, proletariat, never achieved this class consciousness. And in fact, what they did was they created trade unions, and and plumbers make six figures today, right? In within capitalism, right? <laughs> Frank, we're in the wrong business. Right? Rather than overthrowing capitalism, they made it stronger. So the revolution never happened, as it was predicted. This, there, and while class conflict has existed, it never created anything like what Marx predicted. So that created a huge problem for Marx and for Marxists. And lots of people who came after Marx spent a lot of time trying to figure out how do we get the working class to do their job, right? <laughs>